have a cause to worry yes. with, these, with these statistics that the world has given? Yes, we should have cause to worry because uh, what we've seen in the electoral process right now is we've seen more people coming out to get their PVC card. We've seen that a lot of people who were hitherto not interested in our political process have come out to say that, well, their vote will count this time around. We've seen the rallies. We've seen how many people are turning up for the rallies. And then for the first time, we are having a deviation from uh, the status quo where it usually was just APC against the PDP. And now we see Labour coming up with uh, strong force. And, so, and then our election also is getting international attention. It is coming at a time, like my colleague have just said, at a time where we were, we were already dealing with security issues before this election. And do not also forget that, you know, like the people, you, the groups you've just mentioned, the Boko Haram, the IPOB, the bandits, they are all looking for relevance. And then they look for uh, opportunities where they can strike and get international attention to their, to their so-called cause. So where we are right now is even if we don't see these uh, uh, um, uh, insecurity incidents that are taking place right now, we should prepare for the election day, particularly the last hours leading up to the election, so that we can be able to bring, um, put in all the effort, not only the security agencies, not only INEC as a body that, that that regulates, that controls this election, also the people who will be coming out. And then the, the candidates, you know, what I see right now is in most of the rallies is instead of talking about the issues that affect the people of Nigeria, instead of coming out with a blueprint of uh, an economic agenda that can take Nigeria out of this current economic uh, situation that we find ourselves, we see candidates from the other side insulting candidates on the other side, talking about how they are not doing well or what they've done and all that. This is not time to, to feign the ambers, let me borrow your words now, to, 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 to add fire to the already insecurity situation that we have in this country. We're in Abuja right now. We saw what happened a few weeks or about a month ago where the embassies were busy pulling out their staff out of this country you know, saying that they have cause to believe that there was going to be a security threat to the city at a time when we are busy preparing for an election. So it calls for international, uh, it calls for concern. And uh, for the first time, we have an opportunity now to show to the world that we can conduct a free and fair election. And we can also manage our current security situation in a way that we can prove to the world that uh, it is not as bad as it is being portrayed uh, internationally. I just came into the country yesterday. I know, I mean, I came in with some visitors. Uh, some had to even pull out uh, because of what they saw in the website of most of these uh, Western countries on cities in Nigeria, states in Nigeria, that they are no-go area, particularly at this time when the country is preparing for let's, elections. Uh, Comrade, let's, let's take a step backwards and ask ourselves, wh what do you think is the motivation for these uh, political, politically related or election related violence that we are beginning uh, to experience? You know, we just talked about having monitored about 226 or such pre-election violence. Yeah. Uh, that is the one that this organization is able to monitor. There could be a lot more. In fact, the, these figures could double. There are a lot of these uh, incidents at even local level that are not reported in the media and all of that. What would be the motivation? Is it the conduct of the parties themselves and the uh, language deployed by their candidates and their leaders at at different levels? What exactly? Yes, well, I, I think it has a lot to do with the conduct of the parties and the candidates and the language that they are feeding their supporters with. Um, you know, election, it's not a do or die affair. We are all Nigerians. That's what we must first, and we must put the country first before even our political parties. Whoever wins the presidential election, for instance, has a huge task ahead of himself. 
because you need to rally the nation together. We are coming into an election at a time when the country is at a crossroad. We have so many divisions in this country right now. We have people who are angry out of being, uh, seeing themselves as being marginalized, you know, regionally. And we have people who are angry because of the huge unemployment in the country. We have people who are angry because they feel that they've been deprived of their fair share of, uh, of, uh, of, of what is good in the country. So at this time, what we expect, what we should expect from any candidate is how to rally this, their support base and also use the platform to heal the wounds that we are seeing currently in the country. And do not also forget that, you know, if you, if you go online now, if you go to any uh, public place of discourse, what they are talking about at this time is the election. So and anything that raises itself in terms of popularity will always face challenge. And so you have groups who are also look, taking a step back to look at the process and say, you know what, it is our time to show ourselves using the political process to announce our evil act. So we must watch out for those kind of people. So at this time, the security agencies need to do a lot. They need to eavesdrop on gatherings. They need to follow. Uh, they need to monitor the borders because these are times where people will want to come in from everywhere there is a loophole to see that they put a stain. And there are some people who will benefit also from a failed election in this country. And those are the people we need to stop right now. Particularly the, 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 the impression of the Western countries on our country. We as Nigerians need to first of all look at ourselves and say, you know what, this is the time for us to shame some of these Western countries who have put Nigeria, far, in terms of security, far worse than even Iraq, Syria, and even Afghanistan. So my appeal to candidates and my appeal to political parties is to educate their people, to make them understand that we have this opportunity of a lifetime to show that even though we have security challenges in this country, we can still conduct a free and fair election that will not have any security challenge at the end of the day. Mr. Edo. All right. Let's uh, get back to our discussions and uh, look at the way out. Now, we, we, we have been able to articulate what uh, the challenge is, what the problem is. How do we go about addressing this challenge? What must be done at every level to limit, if not to completely eradicate, pre-election uh, violence, violence during uh, elections, and very importantly, post-election violence? Come, reason. Well, I think the first thing we need to do is to uh, set up some rules of engagement among all the political candidates and uh, tell them that there is a limit to which they can take their, 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 their negative campaign, which is what we currently see. The among, rules are there. Yeah, I mean, they even they signed they, a peace accord. They need and to. the INEC rules and regulations, as well as the Electoral Act, clearly forbids what is going on right now. Then there should be an oversight function. I mean, they should be called to order, address them on how to continue. I mean, we still have like three months to go. It can still be repaired. So the, they should change the approach with which they mount those podium and address their people. It shouldn't be uh, an election where you attack your opponent. It should be an issue-based election where people can decide for themselves People can express themselves, and then you can also educate your people so that you give them materials, you give them information that they can use in their normal discourse. This is what I do among my people. This is what I tell my people. You don't need to um, send people to go and attack uh, any opponent that is sending, that is not talking well about you. Once you bring yourself up to serve the people, you must have those who are for you, and you must have those who are against you. And if you want to challenge those who are against you, 
you need to come with facts, you need to come with evidence, and it needs to be communicated in the proper way. And also, like the social media platforms that we see engaging, we should have people who can address those issues on the social media, and then the journalists have a role to also play. And at this time, also, the security, uh, the, 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 the security forces must start now to look at how they can be able to monitor and track most of these rallies that are taking place so that they can use information gathered to strengthen themselves within the actual election, election period. Mm. So, very quickly. So, 